Hello there and welcome back. It took me a while to find a Z690 ITX motherboard that has a DDR4 memory, but I was able to get one at last. So it's an ASRock, ASRock Z690M ITX motherboard. I was initially targeting the Gigabyte one, but the reviews weren't that good I would say so I didn't want to take a risk with this one I have not seen any reviews yet so I'm hoping crossing my fingers that this one doesn't give me any issues I'm familiar with the brand but I've never this is actually I think my first ASRock 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 uh, motherboard basically so yeah let's open it up and let's see what it has inside okay there's no tape Okay, there is no tape under the box, so it's nice. Let's see, it shows you, shows you the features, Wi-Fi 6, Dragon 2.5 LAN, Intel LAN, the ports here, PCIe 5, USB Type-C, 8-phase power design. So, yeah, let's, let's open it up. Okay, so we have the quick installation guide. It's CD, hmm. And under, not sure if in the sticker it will give you 100 megahertz extra I think when you put it on okay so you have the back plate here so you have the back plate here CDs and also then you have your SATA port connection well this is nice it has a L connection there have the SATA port connection, two of them, so it's good. Antenna for the Wi Fi, yeah, it's nice. You could have put it in one plastic, they didn't have to kind of separate them out together. And this is what's this probably a M2 M2 screw, or I'm not sure what this one is, maybe for the M2 drive then okay that's it so pretty much you got the back plate this SATA antenna M2 connectors CD I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this or just download the drivers because I'm sure this one contains the drivers and yeah I'll probably just download the necessary drivers and the board of course no the board small as force so ITX board should be Small. Let's see. Let's look at the board. So, okay, this is like this. Here you go. Look at that. So, Z690 MITX AX slash AX. Okay, let's go through the ports together. Okay, so let's take a look at the board itself. You have your heat sink here for the VRMs, but the VRMs here doesn't have any heat sinks. So if you're planning to to overclock, you probably either have to have a fan blowing on top of it like a top-down cooler, or you'd probably get a just get a, a VRM heat sink. You could order them online now nowadays. If you're not gonna overclock, as long as you have probably a good airflow and maybe you know it won't probably be an issue anyways so let's go through the ports here let's see we have the fan and pump over here in the corner then your cpu power you have a cpu fan slot here too so you have two fan slots next to each other look at how small this case is and of course you have your memory slots here two of them and then you have your lead lead connector here for yeah four pin connector for lead 
Uh, not that I'm going to use them on, on this build. And this one's there, of course, your power motherboard power connector. Then you have the USB new and USB old ports over here. You have four SATA set or SATA ports. So yeah, so that's a good uh, good number to have enough of your drives there. You have your USB-C port. Then you have your usual front panel uh, port for power, reset, the lights over here in the corner. Then there's another three pin here. It's probably um, RGB, so probably your RGB connection. Then you got your PCIe here, PCIe Gen 5, of course, Z690. So it's PCIe Gen 5. You have on top here next to the big heat sink for the SSD and the chipset, you have your fan, another fan for your case. And then this one is, what's this? Looks like it's a speaker port here. And then of course your heat sink. So, so this this heat sink for the chipset and the M2 slots. So I'm guessing there you'll have two M2 slots here. And then you have the battery here connected and I guess glued to the uh, to the Wi-Fi uh, box here for the antenna or the it's a battery here there you go let's open up this piece and see what's underneath okay let's see what's underneath I've removed the screws and loosened this one this one doesn't seem to want to get off so it probably has a lock behind it let's see okay come on get out get out okay there it is so oh no actually the screw did you could remove it the screw you could remove i thought it had a lock earlier i guess it was just stuck but i'll get the screw later it fell off the table so you have your um, thermal pad behind the heat sink of course and then the chipset is over here I'm guessing the chipset is here and then two m.2 drives so storage wise you could put in two m.2 and four SATA ports so that should be enough for most people that's why I'm thinking you know what uh, MATX or ITX boards as long as they're you know running well and stable um, most people will probably be okay or actually almost all people will probably be okay with what uh, you know what, what's available for the for an ITX build or an ATX build so you don't need a big case and a, the big um, motherboard and the big coolers and stuff like that basically depending on your use case of course okay let's look at the the rear panel so your panel you have your HDMI and display port and you have your this is a flash BIOS flash button USB port and this is probably the flash USB port too I'm gonna try to and do that later actually and then you have uh, USB so one two three four five six USB ports one USB-C and two LAN ports. So this is probably the Intel LAN and this might be the Realtek 2.5. What is that they call Dragon LAN or whatever uh, term they're using. So one is a gig and one is 2.5 gig. I'm, I'm guessing I have to read the manual and your audio ports here. You don't have any digital audio port with this board and your Wi-Fi antenna over here at the bottom part there you go so yep that's it and let me get the updated BIOS and let me do a flash because this should have the ability to flash the BIOS without the CPU or without the CPU and memory 
so that's actually a good you know feature to have okay so I have the latest BIOS server here at this old um, SD card adapter I've had, I've had for more than a decade and this uh, SD card it's probably not that old but um, yeah I got some old stuff here so I have the 5.01 BIOS in here and it's named um, what was that creative.rom according to their instructions so all I need is the um, 24 pin connector to the motherboard which is already connected over here and then USB drive is plugged in so all I have to do is press the BIOS flashback switch for about three seconds and then solid okay so one two okay so now it's flashing and it says that after it flashes and turns to solid green BIOS flashing is complete I'm just which is perfect because I'm waiting for some of the parts still so I already have the CPU but I'm waiting for the memory and by this weekend when I get time hopefully I'll be done with this build so it's still flashing you know what let's yeah let's see how long it really takes because the last one that I did with my MSI I left it alone for like five minutes or something and then it just you know um, it, it ran fine so we are waiting for a steady green light and while waiting so that's why I think most if not almost all people could live with the ITX or MATX board in their setup they'll be able to use a smaller case more compact you know unless it's they really need the the bigger or more connectivity and more airflow I guess I mean most people are probably not for clocking most of them are just using the default setting and an ITX or MATX should be able to handle those types of load as long as all of the parts are in spec and you know and um, the computer is well maintained like the regular dusting and cleanup and making sure that um, the airflow is good and proper so we are around three minutes in it's still running so that's a good sign the price of the board is 200 around 220 when I got it I think for all of the features it's I guess it's fairly decent especially for a Z60 and it was hard to find a DDR4 ITX motherboard so I was either stuck with trying to figure out if this one will run okay or try my luck with a gigabyte but with the reviews of the gigabyte it's unless they had a revision too I mean if they actually if they released a revision too that fixes the the issue that I read on them I probably would have gotten it because I already had experiences with gigabyte and they're they're pretty okay board so four minutes in it's still running and there you go so that's it looks like it stopped and it but the BIOS should be the latest one and I'm hoping that this update will take care of any possible memory issues um, that you know that I could encounter basically because the CPU I'm going to use is the um, 12600K which is one of the um, basically one of the first uh, CPUs released for the 12th gen so I'm sure this board has support for it it's the memory that I was um, I was kind of iffy about because I was I'm planning to actually put a 64 gig memory in this build so yeah that's it okay all the parts aren't here yet so luckily I got the memory earlier today after the BIOS update so I'm running a mem test right now with 64 gig of RAM here Okay, so looks like the board is functioning properly. It'll probably take a, a lot of hours to complete the test for the um, 64 gig RAM. 
so I'll leave it as is and wait for the other parts unfortunately the Arctic cooler that I got AIO 120 it doesn't have the Intel 1700 LGA backplate so I've contacted them and I'm waiting for that I, so I would have thought by now that the coolers would have the supporting backplate good thing I still have my Noctua a cooler that I'm using while waiting for the backplate but I'm planning to do the install and like with any ITX case you'd actually want to plan it out and if you can kind of build it outside of the case first before and test to make sure you don't have to return anything before you actually put them all in and finish your build so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna have everything tested and installed and run some benchmarks outside of the case before I put them in the case to make sure that if there's any returns I don't have to you know disassemble the the machine in the case because you know how hard and tight it is when you have a an ITX build and the space and the wirings is just uh, convoluted once you you know you start getting stuff in and out of the case so hopefully this ASRock ASRock board works well and I'm just waiting for all of the parts and complete the build the good thing with having an integrated graphics is I can wait for the graphics card to go down in price before I get them. I'm, I'll probably get a 3060 or whatever size I could get for the case basically. So either a 3060 or a 6600 XT maybe. Well, we'll uh, I'm, there, there's no rush to get a graphics card anyway since I do have my main computer but yeah right now it's running thank you and if this one helped you like and subscribe have a good one